Hey guys, welcome back. We've got a big week ahead of us. Earnings season is beginning. You can see we've got Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, JB Hunt, Citigroup, Bank of America, Delta Airlines, and Morgan Stanley as some of the big names that stand out. Now guys, if this is your first time coming across the channel, you probably didn't know this, but every single week during the season, I actually make this earnings table for you. So you definitely want to make sure you subscribe so I can get this to you. Now, if you're someone who checks your email more than YouTube, we also have a link in the description where I can send this to your inbox every single week. It's super helpful. It's going to help you narrow down your focus and attention to only the best stocks that I myself am looking to trade. So I hope I've made your life a little bit easier by putting together this table for you. If you enjoy it, don't forget to drop a like. And moving forward, what I want to do is actually show you some of the other things you need to know going into this week. So let's begin. So if you didn't know, the beginning of every earnings season starts off in week zero, which includes the big banks, right? And so I'm sure everyone here is familiar with Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, right? And so those are the big names you're usually going to get to start off the season. Now, we want to talk about banks and we want to talk about the expectations for this earnings season. So you can see banks have been extremely bullish here as indicated by these charts, right? You can see Goldman Sachs is up hugely this year. You can see JP Morgan's up big this year. Okay, and so I actually want to point out something. Okay, banks are up over 32% this year. We could take a look at this here and show you, okay, this has been one of the most bullish sectors to begin 2021. You can see this clearly if we draw a line from the beginning of January to today, you can see we're up about 32%. Okay, now we were actually up at one point 42% on the year in just the first three months of 2021, which is pretty incredible. So you have to understand your personnel. You have to understand what's actually here in front of us this week is the most bullish sector in the entire market. This and energy have been the most bullish sectors. Okay, so not only are the prices of banks super high right now, the expectations for the quarterly results are also sky high. Okay, and so everyone's thinking the same thing right now. We're thinking, look, we just injected trillions into the economy. Who does that benefit? The people. Consumer spending rises. Who benefits off that? The banks. Okay, we repair the bank's credit. The banks can hand out more loans, therefore stimulating the economy. Therefore, that's the whole point of the stimulus check, right? So everyone expects amazing fucking numbers from the banks. Okay, and so the best example I can uh, relate to this scenario right now is when you have high expectations, a lot of time it's followed by great disappointment. A great example of this would be if you've ever been super excited for an artist to release their album, you've been waiting years, right? So let's say going into this album, you're thinking, this is my favorite artist, he's going to deliver. I expect it to be a 9 out of 10 album, and I'm so excited, I cannot wait, right? Let's say your excitement level is a 100. You couldn't possibly be more excited for this album. So after, right, this is before, and this is after. After he releases the album, you were right. It was an amazing album. He delivered. It was a 9.2 out of 10. But guess what happens to your excitement level once the album finally comes out? It's going to naturally drop, okay? Because it doesn't matter, you know, th yes, the album was amazing, but you're never going to be as excited as you were in anticipation and in the lead up to the album. Um, does that make sense? Your excitement level is going to drop even though the expectation could be beat. Does that make sense? And so that's the same thing with stocks. Okay, they're going to fall a lot of times, even if you beat the expectation. So this is why you really need a system and you really need to understand what you're doing if you're going to trade these earnings plays. Otherwise, you're probably just going to dig yourself in a hole and lose a bunch of money. Right. So guess what happens before, right, with all the high expectations and excitement? It causes you to go up, right? And excitement and everything. You know, you're just, you're excited, man. You are excited. And after, right, your emotions kind of come down a little, right? It might be a great album, but once again, you're just never going to be as excited as you were in the build up to the album, right? And so, once again, this is how you can see great stocks report great numbers and they will still fall. Does that mean that if a stock reports good earnings, it's always going to fall? No, 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 no. A lot of times you're going to report great earnings, you're going to go higher, right? This is why I'm saying you've got to know what you're doing before jumping in these trades because there's so many scenarios, so many ways to think of this. What you need to do to keep this momentum going higher is you need to destroy that expectation a lot of time. Like this needs to go from 9 out of 10. Instead of going from a 9 out of 10 to 9.2, this needs to turn into like a 12 out of 10 one of the best albums ever recorded, okay? And then the excitement level can stay at 100. But if it's going to be a beat, which is, and it's going to be a great album, that excitement naturally is still going to come down. Does that make sense? So that's a great way to think of it. I hope that makes sense for you. But that being said, please be careful. Don't go into these trades being stupid. Remember, if it was that easy, right? Because once again, this is, it's 
common sense, right? Banks should go high. They should have great numbers due to the stimulus and consumer spending right now, right? Then what? Everyone would be placing million, billion, trillion dollar bets on the banks right now to go higher. You'd be doing it right fucking now, right? But the truth is, it's not that simple. If it was that easy, everyone would be rich. And here's the thing. I'm not saying banks can't go higher, but another thing to consider is IV imply volatility. Remember, you're not the only person thinking that banks are going to have a great quarter. There's another 200, 300 million people that think the exact same thing as you and are thinking about placing the same exact bet. So it's already going to be priced into these options. Okay. Now, third thing I want to point out in this video is that JB Hunt is reporting on Thursday and the benefit that we have this week and what makes this week so much you know, more awesome than it already is, is that monthly options are expiring this week. So, you know, typically you're going to have to wait 30 days until your JB Hunt, ex uh, you know, contracts expire. Well, this week you got five days till expiration. And when you trade this JB Hunt trade on Friday, if you're in our group, probably, you know, it's zero days till expiration. So the profitability shoots through the roof. So does your, you know, uh, loss potential, right? You can lose 100% if you're wrong on this trade on Friday, right? So, a lot of things to consider. There's a lot of things that we went over here at the three main points, right? One being that you can have great numbers. You could still drop. So if you're a newbie, please make sure you know what you're doing before you actually jump into these trades. I see it every quarter. People do it all the time. They think they got it all figured out, and then they get fucked in the ass shortly after. Second point I wanted to make was the one that I just made is that implied volatility is often going to price in these moves. So you definitely probably not going to make money if you go and buy these calls ahead of the earnings a lot of times. But once again, there's certain scenarios that you can do this, so you have to know what you're doing. And I do know what I'm doing. I can show you and walk you through this all if you're in our training group. Okay. And then third thing I want to point out was once again, monthly options expired. So guys, I probably helped a bunch of guys save thousands in this video. So I do feel good about that, but I'll feel better if you actually take some of these thousands. I probably just helped you save. If you're thinking about loading up on calls and going to the moon with the banks. Okay. The banks are grounded. All right. There, there's no banks on the moon yet. Okay. And it's not going to happen right now either. So point I'm trying to make here is that if I was able to help you, you know, save thousands with just a little bit of the advice I was able to give you in this short little video, please imagine what I'm going to be able to show you when you join our program, when you join our group and trade with us, with the Crash Trading Club, guys, you won't be disappointed. And I promise you, you're going to make so much money if you trade with us this quarter. It's going to be awesome. So this is just the beginning. And look, if you decide to sit out, not take action, not join our group, I'm sure you'll be joining by week three, week two, week four, after you see our members are making thousands here in this next coming week. If you enjoyed the video, guys, don't forget to drop a like and make sure you subscribe. We do this every Sunday. So I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Alex, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.